When one hero falls, another will rise up to take their place, or so the legends state. But that's just a theory. I think I finally met my match. This game and the bucket's true story have really humbled me. When I tell you all that I wished I was clickbaiting you right now, I really do mean that. This game and reveal has shocked me to my core, and to you, Mr. Game Developer, Mr. Davey Leiden, you are the finest storyteller to ever live. And if I wasn't as in love with this game as I am, and didn't want to share it with others as desperately as I do, I would have never put this all together, which terrifies me even more. So I'm gonna stop hyping it up and actually get to the real mind-numbing stuff now. Back in 2013, they released a game called The Stanley Parable, and in 2022, the game got a sequel called The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Why would they not just call it a sequel if it was a sequel? Well, that's for two simple reasons. They didn't want to give away the answer, and they didn't want people to feel like they got scammed. So let's move on and compare the most obvious and apparent difference between the two games. In the video game's ending in the original game, the games that were presented were Minecraft and Portal respectively. In the new game, the games were changed to Firewatch and Rocket League. This is very clearly an intentional difference. Now if you need a little reminder why these games get shown off in the first place, the narrator gets frustrated with Stanley and attempts to download games to understand how video game development works better. And if you know anything about how the internet works or was, there are potentially dangerous things you can download that look cute and innocent. So, if the narrator did actually download a bucket, here, that was a piece of malware, wouldn't there be evidence to support that? And there is. There's actually three pieces of evidence. The fact that the games presented are different in the original and ultra deluxe. The fact that out of all the endings in the one ending you can't take the bucket with you for is the video game's ending. And lastly, in its place instead of the video game's ending, you get to experience the game show ending where the narrator gets frustrated and deletes all of the buckets in the game out of frustration, only to be surprised when the entire game is deleted except for him and Stanley. If the narrator made the game, then if the objects were classified as buckets originally, he would have known that, and wouldn't be surprised by them all being deleted. This shows that the bucket has slowly been corrupting every asset in the game and turning them into buckets. So what else should we clarify about the bucket? For starters, we need to talk about how it's above normal game rules. In the escape pod ending, after the game resets, there isn't a bucket to be found where it usually is. This means that the game itself has no power over the bucket. And why would it if the bucket has been corrupting the entire game? Now the narrator lies about why he adds the bucket to the game. He says that it's to make the atmosphere more comfortable and relaxing. Yet in multiple endings, he changes the music on a whim to suit whatever vibes he's going for which shows that he very clearly can change the atmosphere if he wanted to, and wouldn't have made the bucket to do that. But that's even if we give him the credit of making the bucket in the first place. If I- now, if I ask you this, if someone who can't fix a broken achievement, you know, do you really think they would be able to make a magical bucket? That's right, they realistically wouldn't be able to do so, so that leaves one question. Why would he lie about the bucket, and how it got introduced, and how it got here? And it's simple, the bucket has corrupted the narrator as well. The narrator is shown to be a very theatrical and precise person when it comes to themes and with setting. Yet for the bucket, in both the expo hall and the base game, it's presented on top of a cushion on top of a column. This type of presentation is reserved specifically for crowns and other high value items. This level of care is something that the narrator has never put into anything else in the game, so why would he start doing that with just a random bucket he made? Now the last little bit of evidence I'll give you to help any of you that are still on the fence is the insanity ending. In the insanity ending, surprise surprise, you go insane, but with the bucket, it's for an interesting reason. You go insane because you're holding a bucket that isn't yours, it just looks identical to it. Now when you think of it like this, if you turn the Stanley Parable and the Ultra Deluxe into buckets, they would look identical. But if you looked closely enough, you would be able to find the differences. How's that for meta and existential? So what do you think? Do you think that my theory has legs, or do you think it's like a bucket with too many holes in it? Either way, it's just a theory. If you enjoyed, please like and sub because it helps out my channel a lot.